Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Today on Sports Files, we'll look ahead to the upcoming Memphis Tigers round ball season with seniors Shaq Goodwin and Ricky Tarrant. While the University of Memphis football team has grabbed national attention, and rightly so, the basketball season has arrived, and that means an attempt at a redemption for the Tigers, who looked to bounce back from a year void of postseason tournament play. Head coach Josh Pastor enters his seventh season at the helm, and despite a gaudy 148-58 and record, Pastner is under some heat to not only win, but win big. The problem is the Tigers have a roster thin on post players and loaded with newcomers, including a whopping eight freshmen. At the recent American Media Day, the league's coaches picked Memphis to finish fifth. Basketball icons like Dick Vitale, a former guest of mine here on Sports Files, predicts the Tigers will not make the NCAA tournament. But don't try telling that to Josh and his players, who feel confident they can fly under the radar and make some big noise when it's all said and done. The Tigers do have several veteran players to go along with the plethora of first-year performers, and guys like Kedron Johnson, Avery Woodson, Markel Crawford, and Trasan Burrell need to lead by example. And then there's Shaq Goodwin, and Ricky Tarrant. Shaq is the only Tiger who has been around Memphis for four seasons, and Tarrant is a senior playing in his first and only campaign with the Tigers after stops at Tulane and Alabama. Shaq is the only Tiger to have faced Tarrant when Ricky was a member of the Green Wave. Today, the charismatic big man Shaq Goodwin and the confident playmaker Ricky Tarrant join me to discuss the Tigers' chances this season, a season of extreme importance for the players, the coach, and the fans of Tiger Nation. And it's next on Sports Files. Well, welcome, gentlemen. Ricky, it's great to have you on the program. Thank you for having me today. Pleasure to meet you, Shaq. Always a pleasure. Nice to see you. First of all, let me start with this, Ricky. I covered some games did some play-by-play -play when Memphis played Tulane and you were a freshman there and I said, boy, this guy can score. And here you are after your stint in Alabama coming to Memphis to help out the Tigers. Why Memphis? Why did you pick Memphis? Uh, I mean, it, I knew it was a great situation for me and, and for the team. You know, I seen, I, I watched a couple of games last year. I got a chance to watch the games. I seen a lot of talent, and, you know, just during the recruiting process, just talking with the coaches and, of course, talking with Shaq and some of the players coming back. I, I knew we had a great chance of making the tournament and being really good this year, so I bet I, I felt this was the best situation for him. And Shaq, my last and, and Shaq, your paths crossed when, mm -hmm. of course, you were Memphis playing Tulane when Ricky was there. Yes, my freshman year. Not to mention we got the win. But, <laughs> you know, but this yeah, guy like, could score the ball. What did. do you think of him, and how much does he help out this team? I think he helps us a lot in a lot of different ways. Um, we saw from the game my freshman year, we played him here at the FedEx Farm. He can score, but uh, now he's a veteran, so he, he brings the experience and a lot of things that those younger guards can't offer just simply because they're fresh. Let me go back in the summer. Obviously, it was a bombshell with your compatriot at the big position, Austin mm -hmm. Nichols, leaving mm -hmm. uh, to transfer. What was that like, and um, obviously, how quickly did you guys get over that and move on from that? Well, um, well it was surprising because nobody expected it, but um, we had to move on uh, as soon as we could. Uh, it was really ASAP. We had eight new freshmen, well, seven at the time. We have eight now with the addition to Raekwon. Um, so we had to get them adjusted to the system right then and there. It wasn't like a, you know, a mourning period, but it was more of a, okay, accept the information and move on as quick as possible. And our freshmen have adjusted. I know there were a lot of new players on last year's roster. Now with this roster, as Shaq said, eight new freshmen, a couple of guys that are playing for the first time, Ricky, of course, you, and Caleb Wallingford is a, was a baseball player. How do you integrate all these new guys? Is, is the chemistry there, or has that been an issue? 
I mean, it's something that's getting better and, and practice every day. You know, of course, chemistry takes a long time, but I think the guys are doing a great job of just in practice. We're, we're working hard together. We're learning from each other. We're learning the system. We're learning the culture. So I think I think it's, it's been a great experience. I mean, of course, you know, it's, it's going to be bumps in the road because, you know, we haven't we haven't been together like other teams maybe two or three years, but I, I think it's going to be a great year still. Shaq, Coach Pastor talked about it used to be three around two, meaning three wings around two bigs. Now it's four around one. You guys are very thin up front. Nick Marshall's a kid who I think has a bright future, but there's a lot dependent on you, but it's a different style that you guys will play. Mm -hmm. So talk about it and how you adjust from what you normally do to this new attack, this new offense that Memphis will run this year. Um, it is new. It's new to the program, at least since I've been here, to be four around one. But I think, um, I think uh, when I play at AAU, AAU in high school, it was more of an up and down style of, style of tempo. And I think that's the style that I'm always accustomed to playing. You know, just a style of having energy, being able to go up and down the court. So I think um, myself and the team will adjust easily since we have the kind of players who are not so much back to the basket type players besides Nick Marshall. I think we'll adjust easy. So that's when you expect a team that's going to get up and down the court beat your opponent down the floor, score in transition, and get back on transition defense. Don't let me limit us to that just, you know, to be categorized like that, but right. we will be good at that for sure. I want to say that for sure. So I'm not saying we'll only be good at that, right. but I know we will be good at that for sure. Ricky? Uh, you know, Coach has been, you know, preaching a lot about transition, you know, and just which in order to get a transition, we got to get defensive stops. And I think we're going to be a great de defensive team this year. So, you know, just getting out of transition, getting easy point, that's what every team wants, wants to do. But like Shaq said, we, that's something we're going to be really good at, but we also have to be good in the half court, you know, in order to be uh, successful this year. You have to make shots. Mm -hmm. You have to knock down outside shots. Mm -hmm. You've been known to knock down outside shots. Mm -hmm. You're going to be called upon. Mm -hmm. Woodson, other guys on this team that have to hit the shots. If you don't hit the shots, that puts you behind the eight ball, right? I, I think we're going to have a you know a great year shooting. We have a lot of guys that can step out and shoot. You know, Shaq, uh, you know, Nick, a lot of freshmen. They've been working on their shot. Everybody's really been working on their shot this summer and you know in, in the off season. So I, I think I think it's going to be a great year as far as us scoring the ball and, and, and getting out and just having fun. Veteran players like Ricky, but new to the program. Keedron, who's been around one season. But Shaq, this falls on your shoulders. You're the leader of this team. This is four years now. You have all these new guys. How do you take them under your wing? How do you teach them and get them integrated so you guys are all focused on the purpose, and that is winning basketball games? Um, I, keep them, I keep them to a, a family and together uh, mindset because to me it's not on, you know, he's the leader, so he leads him. It's more of a, you know, I can, like you said, I can help you know, show you how to get there, but it's, it's a together effort. So um, I just try to show them to do everything together as family. When we work, we work hard, uh, when we work out, when we lift weights, anything we're doing, you know, whether it's on court or off the court, do it together, build that kind of chemistry, like you said, on and off the court. And that's just what I try to emphasize, just togetherness all the way. And I believe that that's what takes you over the hump. You're one of the most popular players in, in University of Memphis history. People love you. The fans love you. We have seen you go out there and dominate games. We have also seen you go out there at times and disappear. We wonder, we're, we're Shaq. They need you every single game. How can you be more consistent this year? This is the finale, too. You're looking at a pro career down the road. How important is it for you this season? Uh, I talk with Coach Passing all the time about me being consistent. And me and him both know that's with me in my head. That's all in my head. Uh, Keeping the, the minor distractions that um, that I've allowed in the past to distract me on the court, keeping those away and just being 100% focused, I'll be fine. Ricky, we know you're more accustomed to the point, you told me, but you'll play probably both guard positions. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. I mean, you know, it's something I, I, I've been used to since, you know, in high school I played some two, you know, at, at Tulane I played some two, at Alabama I played some shooting guard. So, you know, it's... It's not really about what, what position I'm at. It's, it's just really about just doing what the team needs, you know, whether it's rebounding against playing, you know, guarding the best guard on the other team, you know, getting steals, getting assists. Just, I'm just trying to get on the court, you know, just, just to win and make everybody better. How important is it to get to the free throw? It seems like Josh Pastor has always emphasized that. You have to knock them down when you get there. But to penetrate, to get inside, to get fouled, to go to the free throw line. I, I think it, it'll, it'll put us at an advantage, you know, to get teams in the, in the, in the double bonus, the one, the, uh, the one and one. You know, I, it, it's an advantage because, like I said, we're not, a, we're not a big team, but we're a very quick team. You know, us playing 
four around one, it allows the guards, you know, to have gaps to penetrate. It allows Shaq to use his athleticism around the rim. So I, I think it'll be great. Shaq, how do you look at it when you're not expected to win the conference championship? There are many that don't believe you can make the tournament, which would be two years in a row. Does that give you more fire in the belly, knowing that the expectations are not as high and that people are doubting you? Um, well, I don't think it's necessarily the fact that people are doubting us because since I've been here, they've doubted us. Um, even my freshman year. So you're it saying was, it's nothing new? It's nothing new. Even my freshman year, there was doubt. I think, um, I think to me, it's definitely a personal fire because I see, um, you know, I see a difference in the city and the media from my freshman year to now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I can just tell the difference, you know, from when you're doing well and when you're not doing well. So I think it's a personal fire within me, but no animosity, you know, that it's not animosity built into fire. It's personal. So. What did you know about Memphis and the Memphis fans and the love affair they have with this program when you decided to come here? I mean, I knew it was. I knew it was a great fan base just from you know watching Memphis basketball in the in the past, and you know obviously playing against Memphis, being in the FedEx Forum, you know talking to the players about it. So you know, it's it's of course it's a, be the most you know fan based basketball school that I mm -hmm. played at. So, so you know, I'm, I'm I'm really excited. You didn't come here not to make the tournament. Not at all. I can't really make it. <laughs> How confident are you that you're going to get to the tournament? I, I'm really confident in this team. Like we said, we don't we we you know coach talks to us about the media, but we don't really we're not worried about. What, what people, you know, project us to be or what people expect us to be. We just come here every day to get better, and, you know, just 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 give it, leave it all out on the court. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm really confident in this team and the players, and I think we, we'll have a great season. Damon Stoudemire, who you've been here when he was a coach the first time around, is back now. Obviously, guys that play the guard position, I'm sure are thrilled to have somebody to lean on that has the experience that Coach Stoudemire has. Uh, it's been great, you know, a lot of players get a lot of workouts with him, but what people don't know is he, he's more than just a guard coach. He does a great job of, of teaching the team defense and, you know, just, just, just doing what it takes to win because, you know, obviously he comes from a winning background. So I, I think Coach has done a great job of just helping us out, not only, you know, with guards and the skill set, but just the bigs and teaching them how, you know, angles to score and, and defense, how to be successful. So I, he's been great, a great right. addition to us. Let, let's talk about some of these new guys, because there's a lot of people out there that may not know. They've heard of them, but they may not know what they're all about. Well, let me start with, the, again, the, the bigs were, were, were thin there, but you have a guy like Nick Marshall with a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. How's he looking? He's looking really good. He's, he's still a little raw from high school. Uh, <clears throat> I think Georgia Tech scrimmage was really good for us because we got a chance to see him against an opponent. And, um, you know, seeing somebody who's raw against an opponent, you get to see a lot of things they need to work on. So uh, the past couple of days we've been working on, well, basically watching film, seeing what we needed to work on. So I think he'll adjust quickly because I know he's smart. You know, he's really young for, to be a freshman. So, you know, he catches on to things quickly. You know, since he had to adjust so quickly coming straight out of high school, skipping the 12th grade. So, uh, smart kid. Like I said, a little raw, but he'll adjust fast. Shaq, the loss, and how important, especially Diedrich, but KJ, is a, he's a gamer. How important are those two young men for this season? They're major. They, um, they, offer, they offer so many things. It's hard to, it'll be hard to scout for them, like scout against them and the both of them. But, um, like I said, they... Um, they are a little raw from high school as well, as far as the physicality of the game. So uh, I say give them a few days, watch the film, mm -hmm. and they'll be ready to go as well. Ricky, some of these young guards, uh, first of all, what would be your advice to them being around the game as long as you have been? Uh, I, you know, just tell them, just, just, you know, I've been talking to, you know, Jeremiah, Craig, Ryan, the brother, just, mm -hmm. just when you first come in as a freshman, you know, you kind of lost, you don't know what to expect. So I tell them just, just learn as much as you can, you know. You know, of course, you're going to struggle, you know, coming from out of high school to college, you know, different speed, the strength, you know, players are different. So, you know, my job has just been just trying to teach them ways to be successful on and off the court. And I think, you know, they've they done a great job of listening. And all the freshmen, they, they work really hard, and you can tell that, that, like I said earlier, they're eager to learn and they're ready. Who may be the breakout guy this season out of that group? That's a hard question. I don't want to say, I mean, all of them looking good. Craig Randall, he. He might be one of the best shooters I ever played with. KJ, KJ Moda is, you know, he plays hard all the time. Um, DJ, we call him smooth. You know, he, he more right. of a, the, the laid back brother, but he, he's very skilled. He can, he, 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 he dribbles like a point guard. You know, he can shoot it like a two guard. 
So, you know, though, I think Brody or Randall Brody, he's, he's really um, athletic. So, you know, I think the, all the freshmen bring, you know, bring their own, you know, skill set to the game. So I really think it'll help us out. Another veteran player that's in the backcourt who has had his issues with the shoulder and still as we tape this, we don't know, but we know he's out there practicing, mm -hmm. and that's Keidron Johnson, a very important part of the team. He was big down the stretch last year for Memphis, played well. What's it like, and, and how do you uh, anticipate uh, playing with him on the floor together? I'm, I'm very excited to play with him. You know, his, his IQ is very high. You know, he, he's always positive on the court. He, he tries his best to keep guys up. So, you know, I'll be, it's going to be exciting playing with him this year. Shaq, Trasan Burrell, always around the ball, always makes things happen. Avery Woodson knocking down the threes important players for last season they will be extremely important this year talk about those two uh, those two especially will be important uh every our leading uh three-point shooter from last season he uh he's ready to go i think he'll be ready to you know boost up his percentage from last season trey sean trey son however you want to pronounce it <laughs> trey <Trisson>. uh, <laughs> he uh i talked to him frequently he he's excited ready for the season ready to get him to be more consistent, what he needs to be, you know. Um, they both are ready to go. I mean, I'm, I'm just ready to see how we look on Friday. Ricky, Coach Pastor, what's it been like? Uh, it's been a, it's been a you know, great experience. Coach Pastor, he's a great guy. He, he lets you, on, on the court, he lets you play your game. He doesn't hold anyone back. You know, he, Coach P just wants to be successful just like us. So, you know, we all have the same vision around here. Shaq, if you could change one thing in your four years here at Memphis, what would it be? If I could change one thing my four years in Memphis. Are you happy with everything that's happened in four years? I'm embracing it. Mm -hmm. My whole four years, that's a good question. I gotta a stumper, make, huh? I got to answer that the right way. <laughs> I got to answer that the right way. Um, over the last four years, I think, um, I think I would have took advantage of the relationship I have with my teammates a lot more. In what way? I can say that. I can say uh, previous years, um, of course we, we knew each other as a team. Right. But the team wasn't as as close as the team could have been. And I feel like I could have always, each of those years, I could have been the glue guy. Right. But, you know, I just fell in the category, kind of blended in a little bit. I see so, what you're saying. But this yeah. year you have to be that glue guy. That's right. If I want the uh, if I want the out, the results that I want, you know, if I want results that are better than the results that I had before, right. And, that's what and I, have to do. I assume you're ready to embrace that leadership role. Right now, I see it. I see what I haven't done, and I see what I can do. It's just opportunity. So, what do you yeah. think of the schedule, Ricky? I, th I think it's a great schedule. We you know we open up Southern Miss at home, Oklahoma at home. Those are those are two great games. You know we. I'm not going to say that's going to define our season, but it's going to it's going to tell us, you know, what we need to work on and what we need to get better. But we expect to, you know, to come out on fire and win, win as many games as possible. Big non-conference game against Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Obviously, then you get in the conference play. A lot of talented teams out there. Shaq, last year, slow start. It may not be the end-all, be-all, but it is sort of important to get out to a good start, especially to try to win this fan base back, right? Definitely, definitely, definitely. And, um... And, um, like I said, I talk to Coach P all the time about being more consistent from the jump. And uh, me and him actually been talking about us playing for the program, and that's it. You know, playing for the program, and that's it, because that's really all that's there. So uh, it's not about, you know, what's coming in. Right, you know right. What I'm saying? And, and there's no do-overs. You're a senior, you're a senior. Right. This is the it, finale. you're laid out on the line, right? Like I said, the finale, yeah. Saturday, Southern Miss, the opener. Um, looking forward to it. I know it was a rough off season. You came in late, but Shaq knows all about what happened. It's very rare when a Memphis Tigers basketball team is not playing postseason ball. I fully expect that you guys will lead the way and, and get this team back to the promised land. Well, Ricky, thanks again. Looking forward to watching you Thank play you out there. Yes, Shaq, have a great senior season. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. We'll take a break. Overtime is next. The U.S. Olympic women's boxing trials took place last week in Memphis, and it was a smashing success for former Sports Files guest Ginny Fuchs, 
who beat rival Marlan Esparza to win the featherweight division and put herself in position to represent the Stars and Stripes at the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro. Joining Fuchs, lightweight division winner Michaela Mayer and middleweight champ Clarissa Shields, the 2012 Olympic gold medalist. Now, all three must now finish high at the Continental or World Championships to secure their spot, and that seems very likely. The hardest part was surviving and advancing in Memphis. Congratulations. You told us uh, when you were here for the uh, announcing of the tickets going on sale, you told us that you had to go through Marla. Right. And you did. Yes, I did. And twice. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's I've, I had a great training camp, and I was ready for anybody who was put in front of me. And I knew I'd most likely fight her in the tournament, and most likely twice, or could happen twice. So, you know, I just stayed focused, and I was prepared, and did what I had to do out there. What would describe the fight for us? Um, I would I will say it was close. I made it a little too close than I wanted it to be, but I kept my composure, which is what I've been working out working on in training camp and not getting too excited. Um, and I wouldn't let I, I didn't let her get on her rhythm. She started to get on her rhythm just a little bit, but I made sure she wouldn't keep that rhythm. And um, I stuck to the game plan that we had in my corner. Describe for us your uh, preparation now for the Olympics. <laughs> well, going in the Olympics. Um, I pretty much I have a great team behind me, so um, and then we all work very, very well together. And so I want to keep them behind me, no matter you know if I have to go to the Olympic Training Center to train for you know a couple months before the um, Olympics or whatsoever. But I will always have my team behind me and work what we've been working in in this training camp to get to win this trials. Well, congratulations! Welcome back to Memphis. Uh, thank you. Tell us about this fight. How did it go? What did you do to, to win this fight? Oh, today this fight against Tiki Hemingway was definitely, you know, she wanted to make the fight go on to Sunday. I was not having that. No, no, no. I believe that I won every round, even the rounds where I was on the rope. So 3-0, two-time Olympian. There you have it. Whew. So how excited are you to go back and defend your title, defend your uh, medals? Uh, I, I'm just so excited. You know what, my my whole body, everything on me feels so numb right now. I really only feel like I'm up. I feel like this is a dream. The weight of who's going to the 2016 Olympics is over. For me, at least. You know, the 132 Michaela Mary got to fight Jahida Gonzalez tomorrow. But me and uh, Jenny Fuchs, we're, we're going to the 2016 Olympics. So. Do you feel like you got a target on your back? Every woman boxer in the world now <coughs> in your weight class has is, is, uh, got their sights set on you. It's always been like that. You know, it's been like that for the last three years. You know, I won the Olympics 2012, and then 2014 I won the World Championships. And I've won every tournament ever since, the Continental Championships, Pan Am Championships. So I already know that there's a big target on my back. I'm just going to train harder, get in better shape, and get prepared for those girls who really want to bring it. The girls abroad don't fight like the girls here in the USA. And I keep telling everybody, I, I tell everyone, my biggest competition will be here. <clears throat> in the United States because one the judging is a little bit different they, they they like in the international I can do a lot more boxing and get it 3-0 here in the United States you, you I can do the boxing but I also have to be you know aggressive you know more aggressive than I like to be nowadays yeah. but in the abroad I don't have to so um, it's definitely I think the road to the Olympics is just a straight shot and I got and I can see it but I know it's going to be a lot of ups and downs, and I got, a, you know, almost a whole year to go before the Olympics is here. What do you have to work on to get yourself in shape for to be prepared for the Olympics? <clears throat> um, to be prepared for the Olympics, you really just can't pinpoint three or four things to get you in shape. You got to be ready for, you know, you got to work on everything. I, um, I'm fast, but I got to get fast. I got to get stronger. I have to gain some weight. <laughs> I came in this morning weighing 162 pounds. I tried to weigh 164. It just didn't work out that way. So, you know, I have a lot of things I need to work on, you know, my, my footwork, my inside fight. Really, everything has to be sharper than what it was 2012 because there's footage of me out there fighting. I have the Olympics out there, the Pan American Championships, the World Games, you know, um, all that stuff on the Internet. So, you know, it's really just more of having some discipline and really just uh, a lot of hard work. A lot of hard work is going to be 
done going into the 2016 Olympics. Well, to help you put on some of that weight, <clears throat> you could always uh, hit some of the barbecue places around here and get you some vitamin Q. Yeah, or some good fish chicken or something. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Congratulations to all and a big thumbs up to prize fight president Brian Young and his staff for putting on another top-notch boxing event in the Bluff City. Hey, the Memphis Tigers football squad is ranked 13th in the first college football selection committee top 25. It's uncharted territory for Memphis, which continues to be one of the biggest stories in all of college pigskin. The Tigers look to stay unbeaten and improve on the nation's third longest winning streak when they play host the Navy tonight. The Tigers currently have won 14 straight. And that'll do it for now. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO.